Hello, thank you very much for joining the session on the Fiverr Fest on uh, smart tourism and a smart, smart destination. Today we have a very exciting session and let me just very quickly introduce who will be today at the session. We will have Begonia Oliva from the municipality of Algeciras in Spain. We will have Mark Pascal from engineering. Um, we will have um, Roberto Gallego from Power Space, uh, Dolores Ordoñez from Tourist Tech, and Gonzalo La Rosa uh, from Argentina from Instituto Ciudades del Futuro. So thank you very much. And without further delay, today um, Begonia will tell us about uh, selling the stars in tourism, astronomical tourism, and all the efforts that they are doing to boost tourism in Algeciras. Thank you very much. So I um, stop sharing my screen, please. Uh, Begonia, we invite you to stage. OK, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting the City Council of Algeciras. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, I'm sharing my um, screen yeah we'll wait till the till it gets connected so no worries there it's showing up and okay. it's coming it's coming there you are thank you very much okay so the city council uh, called for the challenge in 2019 for iot and we were uh, selected for uh, this uh, pilot project and uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you to um, the City Council. Algeciras is a mid-side uh, city with about 121,000 inhabitants. We are placed right here at the very south of Spain, around the Bay of Algeciras. And as you can see, we are very close to um, uh, Maroc, to the north of Maroc uh, and north of Africa, of course. So this gives us a strategic uh, situation. As you can see this picture, this, kind, this part of the picture, this land is, a, uh, is part of the city of Spain, Algeciras, and right in front of you, you can see um, uh, north of uh, Maroc, those are the mountains of Atlas, and this very small village, this is Ceuta, which is part of, uh, of Spain in, in, in Africa. Um, so this gives us a very specific um, um, heritage, patrimonial uh, heritage, uh, because we are our uh, land is almost a 30, uh, 70 percent uh, uh, divided into two natural parks. The one of the uh, natural park of the Strait of Gibraltar, but also a natural park of the uh, Alcornocales. And this strategic situation gives us this, um, also this um, activity board, which is uh, which takes place, uh, takes place uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but also 365 days a year. And um, when we um, call for the challenge in 2019, we have few objectives. And uh, first of all, to get the information about like a starting point regarding the quality of our sky, which is quite polluted due to these economic activities coming from the port activities, but also because of the uh, petrochemical uh, pole, which is placed in the Bay of Algeciras. And we wanted to measure the evolution of this light pollution sky. Uh, with this information, we try to de reduce the problems coming from um, the light pollution and always based on this data quality. Uh, so we try to create database that help us to make decision. And finally, for the implementation of a, a, a smart and public lighting system, a more uh, respectful with the environment. But also we want to share and show all this data about, this, our, about the quality of our sky um, with the finally with the end to promote local economy based on an ecotourism and astrotourism. 
So we started to work with the, with the with Green Glove, which was the winner of the challenge. And they they have implemented 12 uh, 360 and 60 degrees cameras all over the local land. And uh, those uh, cameras, you can see this small device, it's quite small. And uh, they are called light eyes. And they are tasting of the pollution in the skies during the night. They are made in Andalusia and designed by them, by Green Glove. And it allows us an easy implementation of a net data. Uh, they have a very low maintenance, uh, but, a, but a high connectivity. Uh, it's easy the installation and it's a fireware radio. So it means we are connected by this uh, fireware. The results and benefits of the, of the project, finally, um, joined into the pilot project is that in the first, first place we got a European funds for the renovation of the public uh, lighting and we are trying to, to, uh, to finalize this contract with the business uh, to renovate 5,600 lamps for, uh, for LEDs all around the city. It is a program for financed by European PROMS program with 5 million euros. And uh, second, uh, Fireware has uh, given us the opportunity to create signatures. And one of them is very important as the one with the port of Algeciras, which, which was one uh, of the IoT challenge in 2020. And they are working on uh, measuring the air pollution and we have uh, get into agreement with them in order to exchange their data about uh, air pollution. Uh, and, in, and on the other hand, we will share with them our data about the sky light night pollution. And finally, uh, this, all of these uh, steps by step open up, open up the door of the Urban Agenda 2030 as a pilot project uh, by the Spanish Urban Agenda, because all those projects were included in the um, in the plan of the Urban Agenda. You can check it here, and well, you'll see we have been working a very long uh, um, participative process process during the last 24 months, and finally we have we have been selected as one of the 17 uh, pilot projects inside the. Uh, a Spanish government. Well, as a result of the, of, of the fireware opportunity, we have this uh, website, Queros de Algeciras, where you can uh, have many information uh, about tourism in the city and in surrounds of the natural parks. But also, you you already can check all the all these plans about the uh, light pollution. As you can see, the red spots, they are very high uh, polluted. And yellow and green, they are less polluted. So you can get this information in real time. Next steps is that we started to work with uh, local uh, providers of uh, tourism services. Uh, during the first year, we had this uh, presidential uh, workshop, very, very active and uh, alive. And during this uh, year, um, one month ago, we had the second one, uh, which was on one, online, sorry, with a very, very great uh, welcome and success. Because the, the idea is that they offer this app with the information about the quality of the night skies to their clients. Next step, um, the last one, but not the, <laughs> but it will be the last one during this year, is that we, we will celebrate our first um, sky watching next Friday at 10 in the night, where we will have a, a kind of a, a event. It's the first one presential since, since the pandemic with about 40, 45 uh, people uh, looking at the skies. We will use this uh, app 
just to, to know how is the quality of the sky. And we'll keep in touch uh, population inhabitants with this uh, with the sky and also uh, through the providers of uh, tourist service. Um, just for information, um, it was uh, the, the call was open uh, on Friday, last Friday, about 12 in the morning, and we had to close it in one hour because all it was absolutely full, so it's, it has been very successful. We will celebrate the second one in this year, presential, uh, at least, uh, by the end of the summer, and it will be an opportunity to show um, the data, but also the app and the, and the website uh, showing all, all, all this information we are collecting on the, the city sky. And we, as, we, as, we hope it will be one more service that uh, service uh, providers uh, they could offer to their clients. And we, we also hope to have a more opportunity to keep working on, on this line. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you. I will I will be ready for any question or whatever you want to know something out more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Begonia, that's wonderful to know. I, I am a fan of, of star watching and I see that it would be a wonderful place to visit. So. Thank you also for mentioning the opportunities that were created with FIWER uh, yeah. that we were able to coordinate with the port and to use this data to improve what you um, what you are doing. So thank you very much for that. Um, if anyone has questions, please, they can put it on the chat. Um, and we would like to uh, introduce, uh, go ahead and introduce with uh, uh, to the next, uh, our next, uh, speaker um, so we will have um, Mark Pascal who will also tell us about um, and to ensure health of tourists what happens after we reopen a city post COVID how can we deal with this so I will give the word to Mark uh, to Mark uh, and thank you again to Begonia um, so please feel free to make any questions, and we will we will catch them on at the end of the session. So I stop sharing my screen, and I will give the word to Mark. Okay, thank you very much, Karen, and um, also and welcome from uh, from my side um, to this um, session. So uh, I share my screen with you. So I hope you can see my screen right now. Yes. Yes, perfect. OK, then let me start. OK, um, so today I want to um, show you a solution idea we have developed for the future of um, smart tourism management in cities. And we had a special focus on uh, the post-corona time and um, other challenges uh, cities are facing to reopen their cities. But uh, before we start, um, I would like to spend uh, some words about um, engineering, the company I work with. Um, we are the Engineering Germany. We are part of the Global Engineering Group uh, with its um, origin in um, Italy. Here in Germany, we are um, a small medium enterprise uh, with around 300 um, employees who are working on several IT projects um, with um, IT services development and uh, research projects in focus. And uh, one of our main pillars on the German market is the area of smart city development, yeah, where the whole engineering group um, has um, project experience um, all over the world. But today, um, I would like to present you a product approach um, out of my team, uh, where we focus at um, a smart uh, tourism solution and uh, where we um, use the fiber components uh, to design the whole solution. So, but before we make a deep dive and um, I explain you this solution we have built, um, let us start uh, with uh, some questions and some challenges uh, cities facing during this um, time. So I think as um, everybody of us knows, uh, the pandemic forces our public life. So we have uh, really strong uh, regulations to uh, 
uh, keep distance um, to other people, uh, what is, to be honest, not so easy in the most of our, our cities. Yeah? We are underlying regulations of staying at home. We are not allowed to travel around the world. We are not allowed to travel in our neighbor country and most of the time also not in our, in, in our neighbor city. And um, especially our local city centers recognize uh, this big impact uh, during the whole lockdowns and uh, these strong regulations uh, very, very hard. So we as an um, IT service provider and uh, developer of modern IT services, we ask us the question, so how we can support the cities to handle these challenges and um, how we can reopen the city centers, we can help to reopen the city centers and to enable the public life um, again. So to make the challenge a, a little bit more clear, I would like to present you um, the city of Bamberg um, and uh, the point of view um, regarding uh, tourism and smart tourism of the city of Bamberg. So, but before we start, uh, some words um, to this uh, beautiful city. It is a mid-sized city in, the, in Germany, in the federal state of Bavaria. Um, it has around about 80,000 uh, residents, and uh, maybe as you can see it on um, on this um, on the picture, a beautiful uh, historical city architecture. So the city itself is also selected as a world um, a heritage, and it is um, also popular for visitors all over the world. So uh, this is. Um, also shown in the in the um, high amount of overnighters. So in the year 2019, so before the Corona pandemic, they count um, more than 800,000 um, overnighters per year. But you can imagine it's a, it's a high number of, of people in this uh, small town. So this huge amount of uh, tourists plus a ground population in the city, as well as the historical city architecture and the small city streets uh, bring the problem of an overcrowding inside the city. And this is not just a problem uh, during uh, the pandemic times. It is um, also a problem for, or it's difficult for, for visitors and residents in, in normal times. So facing this challenge, um, in context of uh, tourism. Um, uh, the city of Bamberg uh, participated uh, together with us in the Solution for Cities contest um, at the end of um, last year. It was a contest where international cities and solution providers working together for three days on opportunities uh, to solve uh, problems like the one I presented uh, to you in Bamberg. So the solution uh, we developed out of this discussion with Bamberg, and I will present you today, uh, was mainly driven by this collaboration. And um, during this event, uh, we were also selected as the best solution for resilient um, city development. So let me explain it um, in detail uh, what we provide here. So. The solution um, we um, would implement, we would like to implement um, in cities and um, we present right now um, is a system that uses IoT sensors um, to count uh, the amount of people inside um, the cities. Therefore, a strategically uh, placed uh, sensors count the amount of people uh, by using, for example, uh, laser, radar, or other measurement uh, methods um, under the consideration for sure of the data protections uh, to count um, the people here. So this information will transfer to a Fiverr-based data platform, which is responsible to um, processing this data, as well as the linking the data with other urban data and uh, to link um, this data to external routing calculation services. So by this routing function and this uh, standardized um, function, um, we call the service a smart routing function that provides the user the opportunity uh, to create a route from A to B with uh, less people contact um, as possible. And this service uh, will provide from our system to the end user, like the residents, the tourists, or the city management uh, via different access points points uh, like uh, mobile or web applications. So let us have a short look um, how it uh, works from the technical uh, perspective. So as I told you, um, we are um, used a Fiverr-based uh, data and service platform, uh, which um, yeah, use mainly Fiverr components as well as other open source components. And that is um, able to run um, uh, fully in a cloud as well as um, in your own data center, for example. So the city itself um, allows to um, connect um, different data sources, um, 
um, as uh, mentioned, the IoT data sources. And in our concept, uh, we set our focus on wireless network technologies on uh, base of uh, LoRaWAN um, that allows a pretty easy um, amount of um, uh, uh, amount of um, uh, IoT technology inside your city with um, uh, with the easy going plug and play devices, for example. Um, and we are able to uh, connect um, any kind of city data. So I mean um, uh, data for mobility services like public transportation, sharing services, but we can also uh, connect data from your local stores, from your restaurants or any other point of interest inside um, your city. So, but um, without uh, diving on this position too uh, deep into the technique um, we, are, we are using here, um, I would just uh, like to mention that the platform enables to merge these uh, the these data, um, and um, we are using here the uh, standardized uh, five-way data models, and have so the opportunity to build a connection to third-party uh, services uh, like the routing algorithm um, and um, other um, simulation tools, um, other um, uh, visualization tools like app um, and web portals. So. Um, let me explain um, the functionalities um, and uh, for sure the benefits um, out of the user perspective. So let's start with the visitors and the residents. So and as you can see on the, um, on the screen and on the mobile phone here, um, the uh, users are now able um, to see um, what's happening in their city. That means uh, they can see the visitor frequency, for example. They can see um, any kind of information from a point of interest. Uh, they can see, as you see the pop-up here, um, more, more information like here in Bamberg from uh, Leschenbrunnen. It is uh, one of the, uh, of the popular places for tourists in, in Bamberg. Um, and uh, for sure, they have the opportunity, as mentioned before, to um, uh, set up um, their uh, navigation. And this is the special function of, of our system. So we believe uh, by using this uh, smart routing function, we can help the city um, that uh, the tourists as well as the residents um, have a health and stressless routing uh, through the city. So on the other hand, uh, we have um, the um, city managers um, as well as the local economy, which is also very interesting in the, in the amount of, um, of people inside um, the city. And um, here, especially for this uh, user group, uh, we provide um, a web portal, uh, which allows to analyze uh, the visitor frequency, for example, as you uh, can see it on the screen, you have uh, different charts. Um, you can uh, build um, uh, real-time monitor for the uh, crowding level inside your city. Um, and um, also you can implement inside this um, system um, more urban services um, to make it um, accessible for your end users. But um, not only for the city managers, also for the local economy, um, uh, this um, uh, system uh, can uh, can help a lot because if you think on, uh, on local stores um, that uh, they often do not know um, uh, when people come, when visitors come, um, uh, at one time they come um, a whole bus of, of people, at the other time there's no one. Um, so if they have a detailed insight, um, which not which person, so how many persons are moving uh, through the city, what is the, um, the pedestrian flow, for example, they can plan the commercial offering um, a little bit better. Yeah, uh, this was a really short um, overview um, about um, our system. Um, if you uh, want to get um, more um, information, um, you can um, see the uh, Smart City Dialog um, webpage where the whole project was, um, was documented. Um, or in our um, company web presentation, you will find also a short summary. And um, I would be happy if you contact me um, if you want to have more, more information and discuss uh, the system and um, how the system works um, in a little bit more detailed uh, way if we have a bit more time. Yeah, um, on this stage, um, let's, work, let's create the world of tomorrow. And um, I wish you a uh, good stay in this uh, session and thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.
Thank you very much, Mark, uh, for, for this insightful uh, presentation on solutions for city development. Um, good, great to see that how Fiber allows us to use different data to build these kind of modern services. And overall, that visitors can also see the frequency at the same, at the same time, as you mentioned, no, very useful for local economy. If I am a restaurant, if I am a small shop, uh, I will be able, if I have access, to know whether I will need more people serving <laughs> because the traffic there will be more frequent. No? So thank you very much for, for these insights and also in the context of COVID, um, very, very much appreciated for tourism that's trying to um, uh, increase uh, <laughs> when things are open to increase its numbers of people coming and that people have the um, feeling that the city is also prepared no, to, to receive the people and, and this is a good, a good way to show it. So thank you very much for that. If there are questions, we encourage, encourage you to please post it on the, on the chat and as you know later or on the video of the session, this has been recorded so you will be able to have access to that. So having said that, we prepare for our next uh, our next speaker. Um, so here we will have uh, Roberto Gallego from Fiber Space, uh, and Roberto will will uh, share with us uh, how can we promote not only at the level of the city, but how we can promote at the regional level. So he will tell us about the experience with Badajoz as a region uh, on how to promote tourism regionally. So without further delay, please, uh, I stop sharing my screen and go give the word to Roberto. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. I am going to show my share, so to share my, my screen. One moment. Yes, go ahead. While we wait, we will give you a sign that it's showing okay. when it's there. So no worries. And Thank you very much to all for joining the session. And um, yes, we can see we can see we can you see can us see. ourselves. So you have to maybe it's under what we see is the air meet that that you okay, have. Okay. There it is. There it is. Okay. Um, okay. Do you see the, the the complete screen? Okay. Yes. Please. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, first of all, thank you, Karen, and then to the Fire Foundation to to give me the opportunity to stay here in, in this session today. Uh, today, I want to to share the projects uh, that the Provincial Council of Badajoz are deployed related to to smart tourism in in our province, in our region, uh, and involve. All the municipalities that the that the province, not only the the city of Badajoz, uh, with all municipalities in in the project. No? Uh, who are we and where are we? Badajoz is is a Spanish city near Portugal, and it's the capital of the province with the with the same name. We have a large share of territory, but a low population density. Okay. And our territory is characterized by having a lot of nature, uh, with weather and very good food. Our tourists is you know, for nature or uh, sunny. We have no beaches, but then I, I will explain something. <laughs> and and we have a follow the following ch a challenge to resolve in the in the province. Uh, first of all, the the population because uh, young people migrate to to main cities in. In the country or even Europe, and Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Sevilla, and um, um, only a few uh, remains here because the second problem is employability. Because uh, we have a um, economic sector that we must develop more. Uh, we work mainly in the primary sector, agriculture, farming, but we need to to develop more uh, industry or other kind of services, such as tourists in this case. 
okay? And these facts uh, produce an aging of the population. For people are getting older, it's time more, and we need to, to give a, a solution. For these reasons, appear the, the Valhoce Smart Province project, okay? It's a project uh, promote to the Balafour Provincial Council and try to incorporate new technologies to the local administration, not only in the own provincial council, um, besides the, the, all the municipalities of the, of the province, okay? With, uh, with including this technology, we want to transform the, in the province in an intelligent territory and a smart province okay, offers more smart services and more efficient services to the citizens, okay? We are, uh, we are using the, the following tools. First of all, technology, IoT, artificial intelligence, big data, all in a single platform based on, based on fiber, uh, with alliance, with other uh, public administration and companies, and the, the, the human resource and, and, and external Funding. This project uh, consists in, in the implementation of a provincial platform, okay, to integrate all the data of the public services. In addition to open data source and other other data source to generate information, dashboards, indicators that serve to make better decisions by public administrations. Also, we want to share this data with companies and citizens and development. Mm, to create new service and products and generate value and employment in, in the in the province. This project began in 2018 and we have already implemented improvements in many services in several municipalities and in own service of the of the provincial council. Related to smart tourism, we have implemented the, the following solutions. Mainly Mainly, we are deploying in each, in each municipality of the province a tourist information terminal for, for the citizens, okay? Uh, these terminals are available to 24 hours per day uh, and provide inf information such as news, events, offers, and all kinds of proposals, okay, for the, for the citizens. And we... Mm, we get to capture the, the visitor so that they can visit every place or even some provide and, and providing them user information for, for the trip. We try to help the, the visitor uh, get a, a better trip, a better visit to our, our municipality, municipalities with, with these solutions, okay? Each tourist terminal also has a Wi-Fi access points free to, to get internet near the the access point and uh, the most important thing that it's the all the use statistics of, of these terminals uh, will be integrated into the into the provincial platform okay through the, the fiber api and we can know the interest of uh, the the tourists the behavior of our tourists and um, in the future make better decisions through the analysis of of this information we have developed more solutions related to smart tourism now, such as, as I said before, smart beaches management. Uh, we are controlling and monitoring the, the environmental quality in, in our beaches. We are with the, we haven't uh, beaches with sea or ocean. Okay, we have beaches in, in rivers on dams, but, but we are uh, we have several several beaches and we control uh, the environmental quality and the capacity in each uh, beach because the, 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 since the, the COVID pandemic uh, started, we control the, the capacity too. We are implementing uh, smart packing solutions to control the mobility of the, of the citizens in, in events or special dates in, in the year. We control the, the environmental management in, the, in all the province because uh, one of the most important uh, tourist claims in the region is our nature and our park, uh, natural parks, and we need to, to control 
the the quality of our um, environment. Okay, and last of all, we we are, uh, we have implemented a, an augmented reality solutions in museum to to provide a new user experience to the to the tourist. But the Provincial Council of Badajoz understood that they should build a, a joint strategy with with all the municipalities to to improve our our tourism. Okay. And this year we are going to start with the smart tourist destination project. Okay. This project uh, try to Im implement a tourism intelligence system, okay, which allows unsustainable and inclusive growth of tourist activity with uh, participation structures that offer tourists a smart space and useful information to organize and enjoy the trip, their trips, inspiring them in making decisions and generating useful information and knowledge for us, for service, companies, and overall uh, public administrations. We base this project in six, point, in, in six ways to, to do it, promoting a smart service and infrastructure, promoting the internet as the main means of communication and tourist promotion, generating attractive and innovation space, increasing the competitiveness of the public and private sectors, generating a tourist model in which the traveler contribute to us to improving the quality of life in the place they visit. And uh, it's important, don't forget the local resident, and we are, we are increasing the quality of life in, of, of the local resident, okay? We are going to, to work in for many access or line of actions, e-governance, innovation, technology, technology, and sustainability. In terms of e-governance, uh, we, uh, we are going to implement a social media plan. We, we need to show to the visitors what is a smart tourist destination and what is the actions uh, to be carried out and then we analyze uh, the interactions to the visitors on social networks, obtain activity indicators, and, and get also sentimental analysis. Uh, we want to, to get information about the tourists to analyze and then uh, serve to make uh, better decisions. Okay? We are going to implement uh, to our online platform for for ideas and suggestions by the tourist, and launch a, a fast tourist promotion channel through Wi-Fi, giving access to the network only when there is an interaction from by the user. Okay, to load the app, publication on Facebook, Twitter, so on. Also, uh, we are going to implement observatory and the smart tourist destination platform that allow us to see and study the evaluation of the project in, in, in every moment through the obtained data and that generates useful information for public administration and companies. Always we need to study the, the, the project, study the tourist, get information and uh, get uh, this information to make uh, better decisions, okay? And also the implementation of a semantic content management system that stores and distributes this information to the appropriate channels to meet the needs to the tourist and increase this uh, satisfa satisfaction and tourism spend. Okay. In terms of technology, we are we are going to to deploy uh, and installing several solutions based on sensors or device to get uh, more information and improve the services that we have uh, already done in this moment, okay? Such a smart tourist promotion portal, several mobile apps that integrate the, the digital content uh, generated for, for use by, by tourists, destination feedback system, video monitoring, of tourist point of, point of interest in the province, beacons and digital signets, and the smart start tourist center, 
more apps uh, based on augmented reality to to give more information to the tourist, video resource and 3D virtual association tools, or digital inventory and generation of additional visual content in museums. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, the implementation of uh, electrical bike bicycle rental service uh, to, facilitate, to facilitate the realization of routes by tourists and with an association app, okay, that guides us to recommend and routes based on the experience of the previous visitors, okay. Okay, this is the, the, the scenario that uh, I, we have in this moment. We have the provincial platform, we have the Smart Province project, we are going to to realize the smart tourist destination project, and we uh, um, have to the innovation center for your space that is a and I have for the Falco Foundation to disseminate and promote this uh, project. We we try to to do a, a big project to implement solutions based on new technologies. In this case for the tourist, but in, in general for all the service that the public uh, administration provide to the, to the citizens. Okay, thank you very much and any doubt uh, I will be happy to, to respond then. Thank you very much. Uh... Roberto for this uh, presentation. How many times I have been to a tourist office and the tourist office is closed, but if you have these wonderful terminals, we wouldn't have to worry for that. So that, that is really a, a great idea to, to have these terminals that can uh, provide information for the tourists who do not know that something is closed on Mondays, but they can still go and see something else. So this is really great and that you will be integrating this or it's uh, been integrated and ready for Fiber API. And uh, yeah, that, that you use also all this information to, to check the behavior of tourists because just also by having an insight on this, you can do the plans, the strategic plan for the, for the region. So thank you very much for that. Very uh, interesting. Um, I would like to uh, also, for the next session, introduce the next presentation uh, and thank everyone who has already uh, presented and giving all these uh, insightful uh, ideas and projects on tourism. And we have now Dolores Ordóñez, Vice President of Touristec, who will give us a um, really motivating uh, presentation uh, because she's going to talk about betting for the future, smart tourism. That's betting for the future. So thank you very much, Dolores, for being with us today. And I stop sharing my screen and will give you the word. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Karen, for, for the invitation, for being here. Thank you very much to, to Fiverr. It's always a pleasure to, to share with you uh, and to participate in, in this international event. And of course, when uh, it's, it comes to speak about uh, tourism, which is in my, my passion. So uh, thank you so much for, for the invitation. Uh, so um, just a few words as introductions. So um, I'm uh, the technical director of uh, Any Solution. I'm the vice president of Tourist Tech which is the international cluster of technologies applied to tourism. I've been working for more than 20 years in the, in the tourism sector, and now I'm also working for the European Commission as a coordinator of the uh, digital and, and green transition in tourism for the Intelligent Cities Challenge. So uh, what uh, we, we, we're trying to uh, make here is just to try to inspire. So I think uh, in this uh, 10, 15 minutes maximum, uh, I will try to give some uh, tips or, or, or to make at least to uh, think about uh, the importance of tourism. So, of course, all the speakers have speak, spoken about uh, the different uh, point of view, perspectives, solutions, needs. And it's very nice to see how the different regions, countries 
are, are worried about the, the, the tourism sector and, and they are working in, in similar uh, activities and, and especially with this uh, commonality, which is fiber. So it is very, very nice to see it. So uh, I think I can go to the, okay. Yeah, I hope you are seeing my screen. So here just some some words some of them are uh, so normally we take words from from english to spanish and, so, and this time i think it, it was from spanish to to english so this tourism phobia so those are words that uh, you were listening until uh, 2020 so um, this mass tourism the digital gap all the things that were related to the uh, over tourism uh, there were there was a, a phenomenon in which uh, tourism was a sector or an industry, but although uh, in some uh, uh, areas tourism doesn't want to be recognized as an industry as, as itself, it is important to, to be taken into account because sometimes we forgot the past. And, and it is very important uh, to take into account which is the, the, the importance of tourism and uh, which is the impact that this industry is having in, in our territories. So we were discussing uh, in, 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 in 2019 about the huge amount of tourism that we were uh, expecting for uh, 2020. And in 2020, uh, uh, tourism arrives. So um, this was uh, 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 the highest hit that it was never expected for, for, for an industry as, as tourism. In fact, tourism has been the major uh, uh, economic uh, sector that has been impacted by, by, by COVID-19. Uh, you have to think that uh, one out of 10 uh, employment all over the world are dedicated to tourism and tourism represents at worldwide level 10 percent of the gdp are around 12 14 percent or the gdp of the european union and when it comes to to spain uh, other countries so these uh, uh, amounts uh, increases so uh, the estimations for the United Nations World Tourism Organization for 2020 were quite negative. So now we're seeing with vaccination and all the processes that perhaps they are uh, not so bad, but uh, all, of course we're we are seeing some regions and I forgot to tell you that I'm located in, in the Balearic Islands in Mallorca. So for us, um, this situation is especially complicated. So uh, in this time in which uh, we, we had no tourism at all, so uh, in a region as, as the Balearic Island in which we were receiving around 15 million tourists every year over a population of 1 million inhabitants, you can consider uh, how it was uh, the impact. And this impact was not only in economical terms, this uh, impact has been in, in, in an in a overall um, uh, term so uh, social uh, economic sustainable it has been uh, very very important so in all this time we had the time the the, the, the possibility to think uh, which could be the possibilities and and you know and for sure you are aware about uh, all these uh, new trends related to tourism now everybody's speaking about the, the importance of promoting the, the domestic tourism, uh, how the people is more aware about this need, about uh, sustainability. Uh, and when we were discussing about the importance of the security uh, in terms of the people that comes to, uh, to a destination, now it's, uh, we're having this word all the time as a COVID-free and unsafe destination. So our minds uh, and our uh, uh, tourism, uh, services, uh, our uh, the tourism experience that we were offering to our clients has changed dramatically. But also at the time, at the same time, uh, we had this possibility. So we are now, uh, and we started already last year, to have the possibility to rethink tourism, which is the kind of tourism that we want for the uh, next period, for the next years, for the next generations. And it is very important to start considering which were the impacts of tourism and, and which could be this, this future for the tourism activity. Because if you ask any, any, any citizen, any, any person, everybody is willing to travel again. So tourism is something that it is 
much more than uh, an economic activity. Uh, tourism is part of our life. So humans uh, have the curiosity to learn, to discover. And this is something that tourism can bring very easily. So we really are on, in this period in which, as Hefiras uh, has mentioned, to develop new products, new services, new tourism experiences. And at the same time, we have to think which is the uh, impact that this experience and this tourism is going to have in our region and in our citizens. So it is very important now to start also discussing with all the tourism value chain in order to understand what is expected, what can, what can be offered, and at the end, which is the tourism experience that we are going to offer from our cities and for our regions. And when we are rethinking tourism, there are two key words. And these two key words are digitalization and sustainability. Digitalization is a word that comes directly in, in an event like this, in which uh, we are uh, in this framework with, with fiber. And we're, we all understand what, why it is important. But sustainability is the, the, the direct consequence. So sometimes uh, we're thinking that sustainability is only related to, to environment, but at the end, we cannot consider this time that sustainability can exist without digitalization because digitalization is going to help us to understand much better, which is the uh, environmental impact, social impact, and economic impact that any activity is going to have in our territory. Why digitalization? So this is a picture in any airport all over the world. So tourists are always connected. But at the same time, when they are connected, they are huge consumers and producers of data. So it has been already mentioned from the previous speakers the importance of on knowing, on gathering this data, on having this knowledge about what the tourists are expecting, which are their needs, and also to have the possibility to interact with them. So this is the next step. So now we are gathering data on how the tourists are moving around the city, uh, which uh, offers can we send to them. But at, at the same time now, uh, we are starting a other bi-directional process. So we really need to gather inform information from this tourists, but at the same time, we need to offer them this information. And at the end, we have to think, that in uh, the tourism industry, the huge amount of actors that we can find in the tourism value chain. That's why it's so important, digitalization, because the destinations should be prepared for this kind of tourists, for the digital tourists. And this means infrastructures. This means IoT deployments. This, this means Wi-Fi networks. This means 5G and so on. But at the same time, we really need all these technologies, all these disruptive technologies, augmented reality and so on, to enhance the tourism experience. We are now in this uh, tourism revolution, which is this digital revolution. And when we are seeing the tourism value chain in the tourism sector, we find a huge amount of small and medium-sized enterprises. And this is key. Because when we want to offer these key service, these digital services to the tourists, we have to think who is going to offer these services, who are the ones that are closer to tourists, and um, many times are ESMIs. So we really, as a destination, as a cities, we really need, need to dedicate some efforts to also contribute and support the ESMIs in these uh, digitalization processes. When we change and we go to sustainability and we ask why sustainability is the other keyword when we are discussing about this future of tourism, some of these pictures are very uh, um, normal for, from, for all of you. So uh, you are very used to see them. So these traffic jams, the, the amount of people going to the tourism attractions, the air pollution, so the, the lack of uh, digital information in the cities, but at the same time, we are, we ha we are uh, facing some challenges as a city, as a destination. So the social problems, so the impact that, that tourism is having in some cities, the globalization effect that is making that all the cities seems to be the same. 
And also when a destination becomes very popular, at the end, a huge amount of people is going there. So it's a different way to enjoy the tourism experience because sometimes when we go on holidays, what we are expecting is that to enjoy the landscape, to enjoy a slow tourism, to be able to visit our uh, cultural heritage or from any destination, and at the, at the same time to have these uh, digital tools that enhance our experience. And especially in a period like uh, the one that we are living now with the COVID. So it has been very interesting. So the, the presentation that has been done uh, from uh, Bamberg. So we really need to know how the uh, citizens and the tourists are moving around the city. Because uh, now with COVID, the tourists are going to try to avoid the massification. So they really need information and they really need input on how the people is moving around and perhaps to get recommendation to visit another monument if at this time this mon the monument that they wanted to visit is very crowded at the moment. So technology exists and at the end this technology is also supporting the sustainability. And we have some tools at the same time. We have uh, at, the, at the European level the Green Deal at international level, uh, we have the sustainable development goals. And the destinations should start working to accomplish and to contribute to make these sustainable development goals and the Green Deal uh, uh, um, uh, trends uh, to make them possible. And uh, when we are gathering all this information, and when we are discussing about which are the sensors that we are going to install in the city, it is very important also to start discussing how are we going to measure that the impact of tourism is having in the city. And I start putting some indicators, and this is something that in all the smart destination strategies is very well measured with a set of indicators that are supporting the destinations to, go, to, to be transformed into a smart tourism destination. So sustainability and digitalization are totally linked. And it is very important also to know which is the human pressure that exists in the, in the territory. And for that, we need data. So it, it is a word that has been mentioned uh, sometimes now. So it is very important for the destination, for the cities, to start having this kind of observatories, the platforms, in order they can start gathering as much data as possible, not only to, en to enhance the tourism experience, but at the same time to ensure the sustainability of the destination and the city. Because at the end, this way, they will be able to ensure the quality of life of citizens. And those are keywords that are very important. The new governments, so it, it has been already mentioned the importance of the uh, public-private uh, collaboration, but in the new governance, what is important is to make work together, or contribute that the uh, small and medium-sized companies are working with the big ones, with the academic sector, with the research, with uh, uh, the public authorities. Then to generate new tourism experience, because this is something that the new uh, tourism post-COVID is seeking. This new tourism experience that sometimes and most of the time will be supported by uh, digital tools. And then the decisions at the level of the territory should be based on data. So we really need as a destination, as a city, to invest in all the technologies that are going to allow us as a destination to gather as much data as possible in order to take these decisions based on this data. This is all from my side. If you need uh, any further information, I'm, I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dolores, thank you very much for, for this uplifting presentation and the keys uh, to think about the future of tourism. Of course, after COVID, I think we all wish we can jump on a plane free of masks <laughs> uh, and be free, no? Of course, in the current con context, uh, this is not really possible at the time in many locations, but uh, with the advancement of the vaccine, of course, maybe some some things where will uh, will change. And thank you for for mentioning the sustainability that it's that it's uh, needed for the um, to think not only digitalization, which bring us together as fiber, uh, and this new governance and the importance of. Uh, 
public and private collaboration and, and yeah, the importance of being involved in small and medium size. The collaboration that, for example, also Begonia was mentioning at the beginning, she was able to, for the goal of making it a, a beautiful um, night sky also and, and how clean it is, they were looking into the data of the ports, no? And then as you mentioned, all the data, collect data, but not only to collect, but to have good tools and also good digital tools and good policy makers and for the ones and the municipalities that are uh, also with us today to, to use this data in a way that it's really useful for them as planning in the city and for their tourists, the people that come and wanna have, want to have a smooth uh, COVID uh, problems. Some, well, Europe is more advanced uh, than Latin America. Uh, and I mentioned Latin America because for our next speaker, we will have Gonzalo La Rosa, who will bring us to Brazil and Argentina because he has a use case or a case, or he's presenting um, uh, how they are planning to implement uh, standard data models to apply for um, the project that he's involved in with Brazil and Posadas. So thank you very much, um, Dolores and uh, Gonzalo. I will stop sharing my screen and I will give you the floor now to take us on a plane, on a digital plane to Latin America. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, well, many thanks to the Fiber Foundation. Uh, for this invitation and congratulations to the marketing team uh, for the organization of this event. Um, it's a pleasure to be here um, with colleagues and friends like uh, Dolores and Roberto and all the, the teams of Fiber Space and Fiber Zone that are, they are always example for us that we are an IHUB from Argentina. Um, for our cities and, and for our uh, institute, uh, that is the Cities of the Future Institute. Uh, it is very important to show the progresses that we are making in Latin America on this, as, as Karen said, um, by applying the, the fiber platform in solutions linked to smart destinations. And uh, Dolores' presentation was uh, a perfect to introduce mine, because thank you, Dolores, for, for that, because um, as she said, um, destination has to be prepared for uh, digital tourists and and they have to 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 travel a certain path uh, just uh, or towards sustainability uh, it is very important and that is why to do this they they have to implement the necessary uh, infrastructures to manage uh, the data and the information just to achieve these uh, these goals and and these plans uh, they, they should have. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to, to show uh, what are we doing uh, here in Latin America. Um, we are from Argentina, but we are working not only in Argentina, uh, but also in Brazil. Um, so uh, we're going to have uh, some, some explanation of our project in Posadas. Posadas is the, the main city, the capital city of, of the uh, Misiones, Misiones is the province where are the, the Iguazu Falls. Um, we are going to talk about uh, two different uh, implementations in Brazil and uh, we're going to talk about the, the Smart Destination Fireware Data Models Working Group. So, what are we doing in Posadas? Posadas um, Hello, is... You, I think your screen is not showing. Okay. Is it possible that you try again? Of course. Let me... What about now? Um, yes, great. So it's coming. Okay. it's coming. That's it. Thank you very much. Go Thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about, as I said, uh, Posadas, Brazil, and the, the Fiber Data Models Working Group of Smart Destination. So what about Posadas? The Posadas um, has a, a smart destination or smart tourist um, planning strategy, and they are uh, starting with a tourist intelligence system now. 
what are what are they going to do? They want to they want to know all the behavior of the of the tourists and the visitors on this on these destinations. As I said, Posadas is uh, is one of the most important um, destinations or cities in Misiones. It is uh, one of the 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 obligatory uh, places uh, where you have to visit when you're going to the Iguazu Falls. So they have a lot of uh, information from social, social media and have a lot of databases uh, from, from tourist uh, profiles. And uh, they want to develop a, a dynamic, uh, dynamic that, uh, data dashboard uh, where they can have um, and share uh, this information to uh, all the public sector, of course, uh, all the, the decision making of the public sector, but also with the private entities. They're going to show um, the, the tourist profiles and they want to, to show uh, which are the, the, the most important tourist attractions visited by the tourists. And they're going to, to, to get this information and put it all together in a data, data collection. Mm -hmm. So um, this project is, as it said, um, in, the, in the lower right uh, corner, is, a, is the pilot project of the Fireware Working Group Smart Destination Data Models. It is the first project that we are working with uh, our institute and Fireware Foundation uh, with, this, with this team. In Brazil, we are, we are working, we are defining the Brazil um, uh, Smart Destination Model, but uh, also we are, we are involved in defining uh, the, the data models for smart destination uh, for all the country. There is a, a, the Ministry of Tourism of this country um, uh, is, is going to uh, have 10 um, destinations, pilot destinations, and we're going to implement these data models on these 10 destinations. So what we have done here um, we have analyzed indicators. Uh, Dolores talked about the indicators and information need. Uh, so we are we have uh, analyzed uh, indicators, for example, uh, sustainable development goals indicators or uh, indicators from um, reference uh, institutions uh, about smart destinations like Segitur uh, and Imbatur in Spain. And of course, uh, international standards organization uh, indicators. So we analyzed this um, and, and we decided to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to get some KPI indicators for the smart destination. And the other thing that we have analyzed, uh, we have analyzed digital objects. Um, we, are, we are working on the definition of, of a digital twin um, or this is our our goal, our our challenge, uh, to have a definition of a digital twin in each of these uh, ten destinations. So we have to define digital objects. These are what we're working in the in the in the group of Fiber Foundation too. And what we use for defining these digital objects, of course, we use the 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 ex existing uh, data models on Fiber platform. Um, Fiber platform uses uh, their own data models, but also we co have completed this with um, schema.org and the one one standard from Spain that is being used in Spain that is um, 178.503 uh, uh, standard um, that is about the semantic on uh, smart destinations and um, Using this information and with uh, some own digital objects, we have uh, developed a, a matrix on all these um, all these digital objects that are proposed to uh, develop this uh, digital twin for smart destinations. Um, in Fiber, we have a lot of entities and, and objects defined, as you see: point of interest, beach museum, uh, tourist destination, social media, of course. Uh, and on schema and on, on UNE, we have another uh, digital objects defined. So we, we took uh, the best of 
of these uh, structures of attributes. Uh, in on schema, we have hotel, tourist, uh, airport, for example, uh, restaurant, and uh, we define our own they, uh, digital objects uh, with their with their attributes. For example, tourist office, uh, or maybe a, a tourist, a person, or or just uh, defining you know, or have um, additional attributes for some. Uh, objects that were defined on the other models. Uh, for example, uh, the, a tourist is uh, had uh, have different attributes that a person was defining on schema. So um, we have a complete, and the results uh, for smart destination is that we have um, more than 140 general data models for digital objects and indicators, of course. Uh, using uh, the, the schema the, the schema structures like thing place organization um, and we define uh, that is the most important uh, goal or the most important result that we have uh, more than 450 specific data models for digital objects uh, here in 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 this in this Brazilian project so, what we have to do, of course, and, and, and taking what Dolores said about, about having some uh, planning, planning actions or having some uh, planning applications and, and, and solutions that help the decision makers uh, to achieve these, these goals. So we are uh, working uh, in, in the next uh, weeks. We are going to have it uh, already de developed. Uh, we're working on uh, an application that, that is an evaluation and planning application in, in which we have uh, the, the most important indicators of, uh, of each municipality or of each destination. And we are using the Fiverr KPIs data models for this. And uh, with the definition of, of one of, uh, of each of indicator, of each of these indicators in the, in the application, we are going to proceed to plan, uh, taking in account some objectives and activities uh, just to, um, to have a, a better situation on, uh, on a better, a better uh, measure indicator uh, on this planning for the, the smart destination. So um, having this, we're going to help uh, the, the decision makers uh, public sector and private sector have a, a better um, definition of their planning and their, and their action plans and uh, have uh, the, the opportunity of uh, define the responsibilities and the goals that they want to achieve. And at last, but not but not least, uh, I would like to to talk about the the working group, Fiverr working group uh, of smart destination data models. That uh, is a, a working group that was created uh, on the last year. Uh, what, uh, why we were in, in our institute were interested in in Argentina. Uh, because we uh, created the Argentine network of smart tourist destinations. Uh, we have uh, more than 150 uh, destinations that are uh, involved and, and, and members on this, on this network. And we, are, of course, uh, realize that we need all, the, all these destinations need to speak the same digital language, as we said. They all need to have standards and they not need to have um, data model, the common data models, just to have uh, the, the common entities uh, like tourist attractions, as we said, museums, agencies, tourists, beaches, mountains, etc., etc., et because uh, we need to connect all this, uh, all this data. And for connecting this data, we need to talk, as, as we say, the same, the same language. And, and Dolores, of course, and we have seen in, in all these panel examples that it's really important to define the, the, the similar or the same uh, attributes for, uh, because in, in one 
in one ending way, uh, we all we have uh, machines talking to machines and people talking with machines. So we need that they all speak the, the same digital language. If you want to be part of this working group, uh, we are, we are uh, I would like to say that we are using, as I said, uh, some Spanish standards. We have monthly, monthly meetings and we in the meetings uh, we have this Posadas pilot project, but we are you're all invited to to share with us uh, another project that you uh, in which you are involved uh, and we can um, we could uh, uh, just uh, share all the, um, the the results and why not define better uh, data models for smart destinations. Um, so how how to enter? You have to join Firewall Foundation individually or institutionally. Uh, you can see the, the, the link over there. And uh, email uh, to the to this uh, to this email and and then we can uh, you can be part of, of this of this working group. Uh, then the, at the end of, of June, we are going to have the, the next the next um, the next meeting. So you are on time just to join. So uh, that's that's all. Uh, thank you very much again, Firewall Foundation, and, and thank you to all the, the 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 friends, the other friends of of the of this panel uh, for showing uh, how you are. Uh, achieving uh, some some results um, and interesting results uh, using the fiber the fiber platform thank you very much thank you very much uh, also uh, gonzalo for the for taking us to this the other uh, latitude bridging europe with Sorry, I think it was muted. Um, thank you very much. I was saying to Gonzalo for taking us to the other side of the of the world, bridging Europe and Latin America through your presentation. Um, also, I wanted to invite just briefly uh, just Dolores to comment also because I think she was she is part of this working group, um, and uh, whether she had further comments on on. Uh, the way you are working, as Gonzalo had explained, on the working group of Fiware, because it would be wonderful to to have uh, to have this to continue having this vibrant vibrant working group uh, at the Fiware Foundation, as there as there are many other groups that uh, get together to think more and drive the path with Fiware towards uh, digitalization of this sector. If you have any comment, Dolores, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Karen. So I think uh, the, the last sentence from, from Gonzalo is key. So uh, this is a, an open group, so you are invited to participate. And, and I think that we are now in, in a very uh, special moment. So we, we are rethinking tourism. We are speaking about the future of tourism. Uh, and at the end, all the uh, cities, the destinations that will be prepared for this uh, tourism for the future of from this uh, uh, post-COVID uh, tourism will be the ones that will be able to, to receive this uh, tourism, but at the same time, they will keep this balance with sustainability and the quality of life of, the, of their citizens. So it, it is very important to start defining some these, these models. Uh, we, we are working in, in a very um, complementary way. So what we, we are doing is to exchange, uh, to collaborate. So I think it's very nice, the, the meetings where we are having uh, with with the different point of view that we are, we are contributing, and I think the fact of uh, bringing on board um, other entities, other uh, people that are interested in this field, it could really uh, enrich the, the the final results. And this is something that at the end um, we, we, it will generate a benefit 
for, for all the entities that, that will be contributing. So I really just want to, to invite, uh, as, as Gonzalo has said, everybody, and I see that uh, Angeles has already put the link in the chat, uh, to anyone interested to participate and, and to come, uh, uh, just send the, the, the email that uh, Gonzalo has said or click the link and uh, to participate with us because at the end we are discussing about the future of tourism and we want our destinations to continue being so competitive and to offer also different experiences to the tourists that are visiting. This is an opportunity. Thank you very much, Dolores. Uh, so for these last uh, minutes of, of this session, I wanted to, I wanted to, oh, sorry. I wanted to invite um, maybe a final sentence from each of the speakers, if they're still there, I think. Um, if, uh, and, and to thank them for, for, this, for this great session uh, on tourism. And yeah, not uh, remembering that for uh, th thanking the city, the municipality that's joining, the people from Europe who's joining for, for this session um, that have, um, have a, a late time uh, for them. So thank you very much. If uh, I just, if Begonia is there, if she would have some last uh, words, I will invite each of you if, you, if you're still on the session, just to mention a couple of things uh, to wrap up this great session. Well, thank you very much. I would like to congr congratulate to all the speakers. We have been taking notes and learning a lot. And I would just, just say thanks to Fireware because, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, it has been a big open door for us and it keeps been so we, we will keep uh, um, learning about solutions and plat platforms and communication and data and uh, five five were smart fest because they they all have to to learn to keep learning about it and also taking into account all this pandemic pandemic situation that has made uh, cities to rethink about themselves and well, all this is a very a great help uh, for us. So just thank you, and well, we I hope we will keep in touch, and we we will see soon. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Begonia, for your time on this. Mark, if you're still with us, not too sleepy to be still awake, invite you to speak. If not, while we wait, if Mark has any connection problem or so, um, uh, we can, Roberto, if you are still there as well, please. Yeah, I'm going to say thank you for the, for the invitation. All the, all the projects are very interesting and thank you. Thank you for, for the session. Great. Um, well, Dolores, we just had you, so thank you again for you and Gonzalo. So, not not to say, uh, we um, invite you to keep uh, joining us. We have uh, our next session, although for North America, so... Um, but tomorrow we have an exciting agenda um, for, for tomorrow, so we invite you there. Also at this time, we will also be hosting a session if anyone is interested also in uh, uh, what we're doing in Latin America or some examples we'll have tomorrow at this at this time um, with uh, Uruguay and uh, also some other cases from other European cities who will showcase also for some municipalities. The session will be tomorrow in Spanish though. Uh, so thank you very much. Having said that, uh, just a final thank you also to to Daniel from Fiber Zone who uh, also connected us with the municipality of Algecira. So thank you very much to Fiber Zone and not to say Roberto also who's Fiber Space, our IHAPS and Gonzalo, Fiber Argentina Engineering with Mark and uh, also uh, again to the municipality of Algeciras and all of you who have 
join today the session. So thank you again and until tomorrow or later today if you would like to join North America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karen, and congratulations for the moderation. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The same. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.